Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the OC Gridiron Show semi-final edition. I'm Dan Albano here, joined by the Hall of Famer, Steve Fryer. We did a little bit better, uh, Steve, last week on our picks. Went three and two as we navigated the quarterfinals, but the semifinals are here. Lots of good yep. games. We got to make some decisions about one team that we we doubted last week, which was Servite. Surprised us both. The Friars are playing once again against a, a very good Sarah team we'll be talking about. But how are you feeling about this you know, special time of year? We got nine teams from Orange County, Steve, in the semifinals. Yeah, we lost a lot of good ones last week, but we still got a lot of them playing. Um, you know, some of the usual teams we see this far in the season, modern day. Uh, Western sometimes gets pretty deep in these things. Mission Viejo sometimes gets deep. Servite a few years ago got pretty deep, and here they are again. Uh, El Dorado, kind of a surprise team, I guess, although having seen them a couple times, I probably shouldn't be too stunned by those guys. Got a good corner, though, Mario Orvalina matchup. That is really yes. an intriguing one for me. And yeah. uh, who else we got? San Juan Hills and Timmy Herr going for it, too. So, Jeepers, Dan, we got uh, we got a lot of in Huntington Beach, the Oilers coming out of kind of nowhere. And here they are playing this weekend as a well. Bit. Yep. And, of course, uh, Westminster in Division 11 yep. um, in the uh, semifinals. I don't know if you mentioned the Lions as well. I did not. Um, so first time since 2013 um, for the Lions in the semifinals. That's also the same time, the last time Huntington Beach made the semifinal. So let's start with those, like you said, maybe the Oilers somewhat, you know, um, come out of nowhere. Well, they're from the tough sunset league, which has got a, yeah. also got Corona Del Mar going, but they yeah. were under 500 earned that at large berth in division six. They're a, they're a senior dominated team. You know, a lot of good seniors, including a recent USC committed uh, offensive lineman in Justin Tauna. Um, yeah. He is really good. And, of course, they got the freshman quarterback, Brady Edmond, who's kind of surrounded by those seniors, including, you know, Tyler Young's been running the ball really well. They got to make the trip this week, Steve, Friday to Simi Valley, which yeah. is a pretty good team. But, you know, Orange County has seen a little bit of, you know, uh, Simi Valley played uh, Yorba Linda earlier this season, um, lost. But uh, they're a good team. They just beat uh, Kareem Lutheran last week. So, who do you got in this game, Steve? This is a uh, you know Huntington playing well. Simi Valley right. is pretty uh, ba uh, pretty battle tested coming out of the Marmonte League. Yeah, you know for Simi Valley, it's all about making sure that Justin Tauanu doesn't go crazy, which he does. You know he weighs six foot seven or something like that, and just big arm guy coming off that that side. So. Uh, he's a, he's one to watch out for. Simi Valley, you know, they they played really good defense last week against Craig Lewis. He's got a pretty good yeah. offense. Um, quarterback did okay for him. Uh, just, uh, Jesse Sereno, he is a senior. Senior leadership of quarterbacks always good. So um, it'll be really fun to see the Oilers keep going on this thing. But, uh, you know, Simi Valley, I think, is pretty good at home. Uh, so I'm going with the Simi guys. Yeah, it's an a, um, interesting game for me to pick. You know, yep. it's a long trip for Huntington Beach, but I feel like they're, you know, the Oilers are also battle tested. They, this is kind of like similar to some of the teams that they've seen in the Sunset League. Uh, you know, uh, obviously right. Low Sal, but a, a Corona Del Mar, um, Edison, and they played a, a, you know, good schedule early on, you know, to the Tribucos um, and Capo Valley. I think they were pretty close with, with Tribuco. So I like that senior uh, dominated team. I got a lot of respect for West, for Westlake. Uh, excuse me, Simi Valley, that's yeah. led by Coach uh, Jim Burkert, uh, who I believe was at Westlake at one point. He was there, and he was also a Christian guy for a while. Yeah, so he's a very experienced coach. But I'm I'm going to pick – I think Huntington Beach has found some uh, okay. magic, and I got the Oilers going to get to the D6 um, final. I'm, I'm picking an upset there. Let's move on to Division Two, like we said, um, Servite. So we both picked them to uh, to lose last week. They shocked Long Beach Poly. Here they are taking on. They're going up to Sarah O'Gardina, who I saw last week handle a pretty, you know, pretty good battle with Los Al, but they they pulled away in the fourth quarter, made some clutch plays. Steve, I left Sarah O'Gardina really impressed with the Cavaliers. Yeah. Love running back sincere uh, Rainey, San Jose State commit, runs super hard. He was banged up pretty good in that game at times, including the last time late in the game. He seemed like he was in a lot of pain. He didn't return after that. But um, they said, you know, Sierra, uh, Sierra said that he was okay, they thought. 
Um, but hey, everybody's kind of banged up this year. He's a tough running back. But they have some uh, hard hitters on defense. They got some playmakers on offense, um, really good receivers. Um, and they were very physical. So this would be really a tough match, I feel like, for Servite. Who, who do you pick in this one, Steve? This is a kind of a wild one for me because, you know, I, I said last week that if if Servite is in, if they fall behind early, a bunch of young guys are going to be kind of like psychologically out of it. And then Long Beach probably is going to roll with them. And it's going to close at halftime, which it was. Yeah. And then Servite's got a shot. And I'm, I'm, I've am I'm become a believer in those Servite guys after what I saw last week, Cheapers. I, I don't. I think these young guys don't know they're not supposed to be doing these sorts of things. Uh, they got to go to Sarah. That's going to be really tough. But I think Servite's at this thing right now where um, you could put them on an oil derrick and play football out there, and they would find a way to win a game. They really believe in themselves right now. Um, they're very fast on defense. There's always five guys around the ball, and every guy starting tackle. That's how they beat Polly last week. Also, Sarah lost to Polly, right? Okay, 28-14. Servite just beat Polly. They're on a roll. I think logically, Polly was the right pick. Logically, Sarah's the right pick. There's no logic going on this week. I'm going with Servite. All right, going with the Friars. They made believers out of you. I think the 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 Polly uh Sarah game, they didn't finish that game, right? It was it was yeah, stopped yeah, early. Some disruption. Um in that game. You know, I I was really impressed with Sarah. I mean, I yeah. I think sincere Rainey was Rainey was like a different level running back. Um, I was impressed with their speed, their team speed, and Low Sal. They did could had a real trouble running the ball. They had even and they they really their best plays were scrambles by uh, Alonzo, Esparza, yeah. a quarterback, and a trick play on a fake punt. So Quade mm-hmm. Carr is going to have to run the ball. They're going to have to really feature Aiden o, uh, O'Callahan to try to open up some things. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure. And then I don't know how, if, if, if Rainey is hundred percent ready to go, um, he's going to be really tough to stop on his own field, the way this guy runs um, so fast and so, so strong and and some of the physicalness of, of, of Sarah. So I'm going to pick the Cavaliers. They made a believer out of me last week, but uh I don't know why I'm, 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 but I, those are my reasons for picking against the Friars sure. for the second straight week. Um, I do think the, the Servite has done a great job. I think they're going to be even better next year. I just don't know about this semifinal game. It's going to be a great game. I'll be there. And if Servite pulls it off, I will hear all about it. But they've been pretty, they're pretty, uh, I think they're pretty focused. They're not going to worry too much about my right. prediction. Um, yeah. Hey, let's yeah. keep it with, uh, what's that, Steve? Yeah, let's face it. The Servite community—if you pick them to lose and they win, they don't—they don't come at you. Don't worry about it, Dan. <laughs> they don't. Hey, um, let's keep it with Division Two. Great yep. division, right? How about Mission yes, Hill going on to, out, out to Marietta Valley in the other Division Two semifinal? This one looks fantastic. You know, um, kind of interesting comparison scores, like you were just mentioning in Servite Sarah. So you know, Diablos. They lost to San Clemente, of course, in their league finale or league showdown for the South yes, Coast League title. Marietta Valley was the one team led by that beat San Clemente. They're, of course, led by their junior quarterback, Bo ba- uh, uh, Bear, Bear Bachmeyer. Yeah. Bear Bachmeyer, um, who wears number 47, the junior quarterback. Uh, in, a, in a He wears 47 because he it, it reminds him of his days as a, a pop warrant and a youth football player playing defense, but he's a physical guy that can run it and move with his legs and throw with all kinds of a- angles. He's a crafty junior. He's definitely one of the best quarterbacks I've seen all senior all season ah. long. Bear Bachmeyer. Yeah. But I think Mission Viejo is kind of a lot different. And they're they've improved a lot since that San Clemente loss. They played really well um offensively for sure. That's that's definitely improved. They're gonna need some firepower on the road in this game. Marietta Valley scores a lot of points. Mission seems to got their offense going. Yes. And um, you know, defensively they've 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 had a really good game against Oaks Christian. They gave up a, a few a few points against uh, an undefeated Palos Verdes team. Who do you got in this one, Steve? Is it going to be Servite and Mission Viejo in the finals, which is actually will take us back to the days that wasn't there there was a time that we saw them play in a Pac-5 final back in the day of 
uh, Troy Thomas and Bob Johnson. It was a uh, mission and survey. Is that who you got yeah. in this final? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, but uh, yeah, I like Michigan in this game. You know, uh, Bachmeyer, of course, is a wonderful quarterback. Uh, juniors got offers from what Michigan, Oregon, you know, Notre Dame. Everybody thinks they got a shot at him, has made an offer to, to Big Bear Bachmeyer. But uh, Michigan has got that great defensive backfield. Dijon Lee Jr., Trey Tolmere, uh, good pass rush as well. Uh, yeah, they've been scoring points like crazy. They've scored, you know, passed 50 points twice in the last few weeks, including uh, 59 against Palos Verdes. Pretty good team over there. I gave Palos Verdes only loss. So I like Michigan Hope. Yeah, the offense is good, but uh, I think the defense does it again for the Diablos. Okay. It's going to be interesting. I think, you know, uh, run defense, I think, will be important for Mission Viejo in this game because as much as, as good as as Bear is at, at quarterback, they they can run the ball. That was one thing they did against San Clemente. They ran the ball yeah. pretty effectively. Um, I don't even know if they were full strength, but they got some good linemen, physical line play. Um, yes. They got running backs. They got a lot of firepower um, coming out uh, at Mission Viejo. So I think it's going to be – I think, you know, Mission's probably going to bend, but don't break at times on defense. Um, and they're going to have to find a way. They're going to have to play a, uh, better than they did against San Clemente for sure. And, and right. a little bit better than they played against Long Beach Poly this year. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of that caliber game. I think the Diablos can get the win and uh, they'll get, they're going to get to the D2 finals. It's going to be a fantastic game, but I got a mission as well. All right. A okay. couple really other good games to go, Steve. It's a great week. Semi-final time. How about Division Four? Two Orange County teams hooking up in the semifinals for the second straight year. You got your Belinda going to Davidson Field in Newport Beach to take on Corona Del Mar. So um, last year, you know that magical year for Corona Del Mar. That I think it was a Division Two last year or Division Three where they beat they they put a a pounding now on uh, Corona Del Mar. Uh, Division Three it was fifty two. Uh, 51 to 20 last year, your Belinda yeah. won at home in the, uh, in those division three playoffs en route to the 14 and 0 um, record um, through the section finals. So now you got your Belinda that's had a great playoff rally to open the, uh, these division four playoffs. And then of course um, they beat the number one seed last week and um, in, in playing good defense against Loyola, and they still got uh, Chase Jones running that physical ground attack. He's still fresh. Um, that He's been really um, impactful running back. You know how Coach Jeff Bailey loves to run the ball. And that yeah. Santa Margarita senior transfer has, you know, filled that void right there and, and give them their ground attack. I really like the emergence of quarterback uh, Holden, their junior. He's been really good. I like the way he can move um, his feet and throw on the run. But here's Corona Del Mar. They just went up all the way up to Santa Barbara and won in the playoffs. They come yeah. from that tough sunset league. Um, Coach Hedick has done a great job in his first year, even though he's been very established and an offensive guru there at, at, at Corona Del Mar working behind the scenes, um, you know, in the, in the past with Coach O'Shea. Who do you got in this one, Mr. Fryer? I uh, like that uh, defense with uh, Gar Jay Gardner and uh, Jay and Ridenauer as well back there. Uh and the backside yeah. of the defense for Yorba uh, beat Loyola last week, 17 to 10. Um, but I, uh, you know, they run the ball pretty good. We all know that, but um, I like that defense again. I think defense is such a key thing this time of year. You got to get stops. You got to get field position. I think Yorba's going to do all that and get the W. Yeah. I'm also picking Yorba Linda. Um, I, I was impressed with them. Um, I've seen them twice this year. I've been pretty impressed with them. <laughs> um I don't know how how I like what they got offensively. I like their defensive line. They got some some playmakers. I think they're and that defense has got some new emerging players on it. They have some they're young in some spots. Um yeah. I noticed they had three sophomores or leading tacklers last week against Loyola. Um so but we'll see, you know, Corona Del Mar is gonna be tough to play, you know, to beat at their home um field. Caleb Bennett is a is a really good player. That should be another Fine. uh dandy game and it is you know it's it's also a preview uh, once again uh mr fryer you know these both these teams are slated to be in that orange county number two league next yes. year right there um and though these are these are familiar foes um you know they're gonna be playing they're probably gonna be playing uh league games uh you know coming up next you season. know who else is gonna be in that league i think it looks like they're in the bottom part of it right there thanks to tony henny of uh 
the coach at Dana for sending these out to us. Western be in that league too. Ow, look at that. Yeah. Pioneers is moving on up in the world. Dang. They're like that is impressive. Nine you know, or something just years ago. They've been on fire and blowing yeah. out teams in division five playoffs certainly probably helps when they're Josh beating... Faulkner, man. Josh Faulkner. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're beating teams like Apple Valley and Connolly yeah. by a ton of points. You know, that's yeah. a Connolly team, you know, of Ontario that um, they beat El Medina. And that's yeah. one of those teams that's a little bit in the next. I think their El Medina is on D3, but it is, um, it is interesting to see what Western, I mean, they're, pa they're passing Newport Harbor. That's a team that uh, beat Corona Del Mar this year. Wild. All right, Steve, how about finishing up here? Maybe the game of the week. You got to go division one, right? Modern sure, day, well. they got their one loss to um, shut out loss to Bosco. We know all about that. But the Monarchs put a shutout uh, last week on Jay Sarah, 38-0. Yeah. That's the second time this season they shut out the Lions. That's a really good uh, Jay Sarah team that they've shut out twice this season. Um, that's a Lions team that was, you know, third, uh, you know, outright. Well, the, with the tiebreaker in the Trinity League, that's a Servite, that's a Jay Sarah team that's beat, um, you know, Servite. 49 nothing. I mean, that's mm -hmm. so the shutout, um, Jay Sarah. I know uh maybe Jay Sarah was dealing with some quarterback issues a little bit at the end and and the running right. game, but still that's a good talented team. Says a lot about the uh modern day defense. And they were outstanding yeah. last week. But you yep. know, the flip side on offensively, you know, um Elijah uh Brown was really efficient last week, throwing, you know, completed like 74% of his passes. And Ajon Bryant is you know picked up the slack at running back. It was really interesting last week, right, Steve? Modern Day did not have Jordan Davison or Nathan uh, Frazier running the ball. So you wonder about their status coming into this game against uh, Sierra Kane. And, um, you know, Frazier has been, you know, he played you know, late in the regular season. Um, I don't think we've seen Davison since the Bosco game, but it's Modern Day's defense. Elijah Brown, um, they got um, Harris going um, at receiver last week. Um, guys like, um, uh, the Zabian Brown got his, uh, second interception as many weeks They're getting him going at cornerback. Um, but who do you think in this one? Cause you know, Sarah Cannon is undefeated. They're pretty balanced on offense. I like Wyatt Becker at, um, at receiver. They got a pretty good, I mean, at quarterback, Wyatt yeah. Becker at, at quarterback, he can move a little bit. They're running and passing it. They got a good defense. Who do you got in this one, Mr. Fryer? Yeah, and they got receivers over there too. Uh, the kid um, Quasi Glimer, Gilmer and uh, DJ Xavier Jordan over there at Sierra Canyon. A couple guys who can catch the ball. I think like eight different guys that caught touchdown passes for the Trailblazers of Sierra Canyon play in a really good league, the Mission League, right? Went undefeated in that great league. So, um, but, uh, you know, I think that the Monarchs are going to keep rolling in this one. You know, Ajon Bryant, a you know, little speedy guy over at yeah. running back. I think it's, you know, as good as Jordan Davison is and as great as Nate Frazier is, too, is probably one of the top three or so sprinters in Orange County track and field. And then that offensive line is just nasty good. So uh, I like the Monarchs to win this game at the Bowl. Um, they're going to yeah. be there Friday night at 7 o'clock. That's right. As good as Eric Canyon is. And I know talking to our friend Eric Sondheimer uh, of the Times, he said that you got 1A and 1B in the southern section. Um Bosco and modern day, and then a little bit of a drop to Sierra Canyon talent wise. I know you saw Sierra Canyon beat Orange Lutheran. I want to say yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So you're out there and you saw how good those athletes are, but yeah. I think modern day gets it going. Uh, I think they're, you know, uh, Elijah Brown is a good big game quarterback, even though he didn't do so well against Bosco. That's because Bosco played perfectly, but I, I like, uh, I like modern day advance and, on the other side of it, you know, we got what Bosco Centennial going at a Dan. So that's right. The Coliseum on November 24th. We're going to see Bosco modern day. Am I right? I believe so. I'm picking Monarchs and Braves once again to meet in the division one final like day after Thanksgiving. And um, yeah, I mean, you got to give it up for the trailblazers. I give them the respect because they're what they're, they're three and oh against Trinity league teams. They beat Santa Margarita. They beat orange Lutheran and yes. they opened the season by beating Jay Sarah. But as we know, as, as followers of the Trinity League, there's levels to the Trinity League. You can be 3-0, and but it's a different level once you get into modern day and Bosco territory. 
Yeah. There's, as they like to say, there's levels to this. I think modern day is going to show that, but they still got some question marks at running back. And um, there's not many questions about their defense. I, I, I know, um, you know, I, I've been, I've told people that I don't think that I think the 28, nothing loss to Bosco in some ways it was the score is a little bit deceiving um, in, in, in some ways where Bosco did get one of those touchdowns late. They got another one on a trick play. They got another one on a contested play. Hey, the Braves made plays. They they made plays. But it wasn't as, I think in some ways, modern day definitely had troubles on offense. But their defense, it wasn't as bad as maybe the score shows. That defense was there. And it took, you know, Bosco was running two trick plays uh, in yeah. that game. Could have, could have struck on both of them. But I think modern day can... I think that I like that defense. We'll see how they rally up. We'll see how let's see what they show us this week, Steve. Yep. It's going to be very interesting. A lot of good games out there. All right. So we disagree on Servite Sarah. That's going to be a great game. We disagree on Huntington Beach and uh, Simi Valley. That's going to be a great game in Division Six. But uh, hey, man, there's a lot of great games. We'll see who we're talking about next week in the final, Steve. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I look forward to it. I'm going to be at the modern day Sierra Canyon game. You're going to be at Servite Sarah, and we got a few of our other teammates uh, interspersed all dispersed all around. So it's going to be a great week of football again. It feels like football weather out there too, doesn't it? So it's going to be That's great. Right. All right. Well, hey, for Steve Fryer, Dan Albano, and thanks for joining us here and coming along the journey on the OC Gridiron Show.